Welcome back, devotees. We're back once again on our Animal Only account, where we try to beat Genshin with only animal characters. So after spending our Primo Gym saving and finally got the Giant Hat Emo Boy after those 160 pulls, we learned that in the next patch that Short Emo Boy is going to be on Raid Up again. I became an emo again after hearing this announcement, so before 3.4 arrives, we will have to salvage as many primo gems as we can in order to prepare for Xiao. Anyways, speaking of Xiao, last time we completed the Li Yue Archon quest, and before we fell down a J chamber, we got rescued by him. So hopefully this means that Xiao will enter our summons as well once we pull for him. We also started a Genshin TCG to get some primo gems from completing the quests. I know I asked you guys in the last video on whether or not I should only use animal cards for TCG, since it will be a fun challenge, and a lot of you guys actually like the idea, so I'll most likely try it and see. So for the past few weeks, I actually did a lot of off-stream farming for both the Geo Oculi and the Animal Oculi, to level up our respective statues for both of the regions, in order to maximize our stamina. I actually got my Animal Statue to max level, but my Geo Statue still needs some leveling to do. Last video, I came across this unreachable Geo Oculus, and I asked you guys for suggestions on what to do. You guys gave me a bunch of good tips, but I actually haven't tried tried any of your suggestions yet, but thanks in advance for contributing to 1% of my Liyue statue progress. Anyways, let's go to Dragonspine and attempt to unlock the region and beat the world quest with animal only characters. First we had to talk to Iris the Adventurer to begin the Dragonspine world quest. Don't do Dragonspine alone? I'm gonna do Dragonspine alone because it'll be more challenging that way. If I do it in co-op then it'll be too easy. But I just know there's like parts that's kinda difficult which I want to challenge myself in and see if I can beat it. I know I could technically co-op and complete Dragon Spine way easier, since I did help someone in the past before, in another one of my videos. Alright, we're finally here. Come on, don't be scared. Walk on the ice. No! Why? But with first time exploration, I'm going to try to get through them by myself. Before we could progress through the world quest, we met our arch nemesis once again. Alright Frosty, we met again. This time, I'll be able to destroy you with my animal characters, hopefully. Alright, he's a bit hard. Well luckily, I think we're able to just collect the Scarlet Quartz and then just burn him like this. Yeah, I think that works. So Frosty the Lava Troll is pretty thick, especially since we only had animal characters. But luckily with a Scarlet Quartz that would litter all across Dragon Spine, we could break them and deal pyro damage to the enemies. And it will come in handy while we go through this region. While fighting Frosty, I actually gave myself another personal challenge. My goal is to not die at once in Dragon Spine. I'm gonna treat this like it's Nuzlocke, so wish me luck. Hopefully I didn't go ahead of myself, especially since I don't have any healers on my team. But let me know whether or not I can beat Dragon Spine without dying in the comments below. Anyways, we defrosted the first barrier and unlocked the frost bearing tree. On the way to the Dragon Spine statue of a 7, I also collected some crimson agates along the way in order to level up our frost bearing tree. After unlocking the statue, we attempted to go to the summit, but the wind kept us from going any further. We reported back to Iris in the adventurer's camp and set it off to thaw the rest of the shards out before we could go to the summit. On our way to thawing out the first shard, we encountered a major problem. I think this place has like... the... cryo that I need to do? Okay, I just remember that. Let's think. I have to drag a slime somewhere. How else am I supposed to do this thing? So in order to complete this part of the world quest, we need to infuse ourselves with cryo and light up the cryo monument following the exact order of this ceiling. Can I just walk away and then teleport back? That's what I'm wondering right now. Or maybe touching this ice. Okay. This doesn't freeze me. I actually figured out a plan to complete this puzzle with my animal characters. Portable waypoint works, I think. But... There is a waypoint already that's near here, so I might be able to just teleport in and quickly infuse it. However, one thing I was worried about was whether or not the cryo monuments would be locked again after I teleport away. So I tested it out by teleporting somewhere else and back. Like if I, okay, let me just try. If I teleport away, maybe... Is there a way that the city is still like... there? Like... So we don't have to start over? Okay. Alright. I think this works. 
Since teleporting doesn't interfere with a puzzle, it's time to put our plan into fruition. So before that, we'll just go find an enemy or something to get frozen with. So I found a cryo helicho like a shoot cryo arrows at me, which made my traveler infused with cryo. Okay, cryo enemy. And you just do this, right? Run all the way here. It might be a bit slow, but whatever. Alright. I actually don't know what order we're gonna do this in. Is it this? 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 This and this? I don't even know. Cause like... For my memories of Skylux, I think this was the first one. But I actually forgot. Alright, so the first part of our plan worked. Now we just have to light up each of the monuments in hopefully the correct order, so we can move on to the next part of the quest. We quickly got shot by the heli troll, thank you, and immediately teleported back to activate the second monument. Big brains. Alright, that's two, this is three, four is over here, and then five. Okay. On our third trip back to the cave, this heli troll got some skill issues. Oh, ain't better. After getting infused with cryo again, we quickly went back to light up the third monument. So for the fourth monument, our traveler's cryo infusion ran out right before we could use our elemental skill. Okay, I teleport a little bit too late. Since the last two monuments are further away from the teleport waypoint, we have to act fast or else this will happen. No! This one is so far away. But how did I even get that one lit up? That means I'm doing it a bit too slow. Luckily, the third time is a charm. Uh, get me over there. Uh. How am I supposed to do this last one? It's like the furthest out of every one of them. Do I even have time? So the last one might pose a problem for us, since it's the furthest away from the teleport waypoint. But I still decided to try it the same way that we've been doing before. I wish I could just drag like a, like a heli tool over here so it would be easier, but we gotta do this the hard way. Hopefully we have time though. Okay. Wait! I swapped my characters a bit too late. Alright. Whatever. I blame my keyboard. Honestly, lighting up the monuments with only animal characters is a bit different and a lot of fun, and moments like these gave me an adrenaline pump. Uh. Since we are running out of time, I came up with a different idea. I mean, I have a, I have plan B. I'm just gonna do my burst. This will be easy. There. He'll reach it, right? Alright, so I'm correct. After completing the cryo puzzle, we still had to fight some enemies. For the first two ruin guards, I used Faruzan to shoot their weak points, which made it easier for us to defeat them. We still ran into some trouble because of sheer cold, and without a healer, this was a challenge. Okay, I'm freezing actually. Where's the... Where? Okay, over here. After defeating the two ruin guards, we still had a ruin greater to fight. Food. I do have food, but I'm gonna try not to use it, so... It looks cooler like that. Oh, okay, get wrecked. Well, remember what I said earlier? My goal is to not die once in Dragon Spine. I'm gonna treat this like it's Nuzlocke, so... Wish me luck. This is not going to end well, considering the fact that both my Faruzan and Hazel are on life support. Yeah, my Faruzan is almost dead, so... <laughs> I gotta be careful. How are you doing this again? This Ruin Grado just doesn't stop. I'm already done playing with it. As someone that's trying to show off by not eating any food to heal, this fight was honestly the most intense, other than that first giant animal ball fight back in episode 1. Ow. <laughs> if my Charbro dies, then I'm basically screwed as well because my Hazel can't do anything. It's like tea Oh, no, no. I'm trapped. 
Ow! How do you not get hit? How do I not get hit? Is this like impossible to dodge? We were actually able to defeat the Ruin Grader without losing any of our characters, and got access to the underground. We were able to melt the ice with Scarlet Quartz and summon a city that was trapped inside the ice, and we were able to thaw out the shards at the end. The third shard is located in a cave, and before we could thaw them out, we had to complete a timed challenge and defeat all the enemies. But before we do that, we led all the Seelies to their court, just so we could have warmth while we are fighting. This timed challenge was honestly not bad with animal characters, and even I was surprised. Wait, is this even hard? We had to defeat three Cryo Abyss Mages in the final wave, so I picked up a Scarlet Quartz and did this. Abyss Mages time? Yes. I still have two minutes, and I'm already at the last three Abyss Majors. Don't think I'm gonna have trouble with this. We quickly got rid of their shields, and afterwards we cleaned them up pretty fast. And that's why I want a Seely to be next to me, so I don't freeze to death as well. I'm basically getting a warmth over here at the same time. So after we finally thaw out the final shard, we can now make our way to the summit. We had another fateful fight against Frosty. But this time, the lava troll isn't playing around. The torches were covered up, so we had to get close to this CD for warmth. Nope. How do I- Ow. There's some kind of torches here, right? Or some kind of heating source? Whatever. I'll just freeze to death. It's a race against time, and hopefully we can defeat the lava troll before any of our characters die. Alright, I'm having skill issues now because I'm technically freezing to death. Alright, that was my first death, unfortunately. I ran out of my dashes. Just running around helplessly as sheer cold is slowly freezing me was terrifying. But since Frosty was almost dead as well, I tried everything that I could to defeat it before we go down. Okay, this always happened. I, I dashed at the wrong time and then I just got paid for it basically. We barely survived on life support, but we were finally able to defeat Frosty again. Uh, well, definitely no casualties at all. Afterwards, we reached the very top of the dragon spine and started to thaw out the final shards. But then I made this mistake. I'll heal soon store. Wait. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> I can't climb back. I can't climb up over here because I don't have pyro. No. Am I gonna? Well, I guess this is why you should have healed. Now I gotta go back up there again. At least we got an achievement, so that was good. Anyways, we climbed back up to the summit and launched this pillar to space. We also unlocked the domain and collected all the chests. After that, we returned to the adventurer's camp and reported back to Iris to complete the Dragon Spine World Quest. Since we are now an official Wanderer Haver, we made our way through Kasim and into Sumeru in order to unlock the statue of the Seven Mayor. Both Wanderer and Faruzan needed materials from Sumeru in order to ascend them, so we'll have to farm them first before tackling Inazuma. But before we do so, let's recruit some people off my Twitch stream so we could complete weeklies and make them fight bosses for us. As always, my co-op teammates had to be an emo as well, so we'll be using animal characters to clear the weeklies. First, we went and beat up Arm for Days, the Ruin Hunter. After that, we went to Wu Wang Hill and defeated Arm for Days' cousin, Four Armed Robot. And finally, we had to fight Rocky, the Geo Lawa Troll. But it didn't put up much of a fight against our team. Next, we took our four animal boys to beat up a child. We got through the first phase pretty quickly, and the second phase went by pretty smoothly as well. When we got to the final phase, things started going downhill, starting with Xiao dying. Okay. One of our teammates died, Silux, cool. Even I took some damage as well. What? You guys are getting called Wolfus by Skara, so... That's not good. Once Chow did this attack, our Wanderer teammate was flying around like a clueless airplane. And in the end, he also dropped like a fly. How did they just all die? This is why you guys bring Jin or something, or Sayu, at least a healer. Well, since all of my teammates left me alone to fend for myself, let's demonstrate to them how to play as an emo.
We actually got to have the last laugh and we were able to finish Child off. You're welcome for the carries, guys. We got a 5 star artifact and a dream solvent from carrying my teammates. But unfortunately, the artifact didn't have good substats. Next, we also went to fight the wolf. Even though the boss was immune to our animal element, we still did pretty good damage to phase it pretty quickly. With Venti in our team, we were able to seek refuge with a wind current to avoid the angry wolf rampaging down below us. Although we almost got run over after the wind current was gone. Wolf has skill issues. Oh. No! Okay, I almost got like jumped on. After defeating the wolf, we were able to get another 5 star artifact, another dream solvent, and a poem builder as well. So after weeklies, I made my way through Sumeru and unlocked the statue of a 7 layer. I also went to the desert region and finally reached our next target, the giant Dorito boss. Our team actually defeated it pretty quickly, and we were also able to get some essential materials for our Faruzan. But yeah, if you are an emo, and have an emo character that you would like to use to help me in co-op, make sure to join my Twitch stream while I'm live. And thanks again to everyone that helped me. So in the last video, I asked whether or not I should pull on a Raiden banner for Sayu, and I received mixed answers. Some of you guys wanted me to save for Xiao, while some of you wanted me to pull for Sayu because of her kit. Since I'm like only 3 pulls away from a 4 star, I'll just pull until I get a 4 star and save the rest of my primos for Xiao on the next banner. I'll do 3 pulls, and if I get a 4 star, then I hope it's Sayu. If not, then... Doesn't hurt me. I'm hoping I can get a 4 star like at my... This is the 8th pull, I believe, until Pity. 4 star Pity. Raiden, pray. If I get Raiden, then... She'll stay in jail as well. Okay, let's just be Sayu now. Doesn't hurt me until Raiden comes home? Okay. Well, even though we didn't get Sayu, we might get her on a standard banner, so it's alright. As for a healer, some of you guys also suggested me that I should craft a prototype Amber and stick it on either Hazel or Sucrose to make them a healer. So we always have that option in case we need any heals for Abyss. So thanks again for the tips and recommendations. And if you guys have any other ideas on what I should do to make my life easier for this series, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll also feature your comment in the next video. Now I have another question for all of you guys as well. Since I almost completed my battle pass, should I also buy the battle pass in preparation for Xiao? The Primo Gems and Face will definitely help. If I do buy the battle pass, I'll most likely pick the deathmatch weapon as well since that weapon is pretty good for Xiao. But let me know otherwise if there are other better choices to make for the battle pass weapon. In case you are wondering, this animal only account is not free to play since we bought Wilkins already and also made some Genesis crystals appear. But yeah. Let me know if I should buy the battle pass in the comments below. With 3.3 coming to a close, we got our targets for this patch, which was both Wanderer and Faruzan, although sacrifices had to be made. Anyways, with Xiao confirmed in the first phase of 3.4, hopefully we'll be able to get him without losing a 50-50, or else you guys will see an emo votee. So make sure to like the video so I'll be less of an emo if I don't get Xiao. If you enjoyed this series, make sure to also subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.